Hi, I'm Lindsay with Hazel and Ruby, and this is... Jamie. With... Hazel and Ruby. And that is a coincidence. Isn't We're both it? with the same company. I am Ruby, by the way. And I'm Hazel, and actually, <laughs> this is our company. Right? It is. Right. What are we going to do today? We are going to show one of our signature products, which is our stencil mask. So right now, we have three different stencil mask products, and what a stencil mask is, it's the positive of a stencil. Basically, these are pieces that we put together that you can use over and over again. You can reposition them. We've used these like, like 100 times, haven't we? Yeah. Something like that. So this is to create subway art, things for your house, home decor type project, projects that you might have. So um, subway art's a huge trend. I'm sure everyone's following on Pinterest, pinning things all day long. You've got tons and tons of boards with all this decor for your home, and we're going to show you how you can make it, so it's going to be great. We have our, uh, our large letters, the subway art. Um, we call this broadside letters. And then we also have our blindside letters. You made a good point earlier. What can you do? You can mix them up, right? Oh, yeah. You can put them yeah. all together. Well, that's why these are so fun. This is going to help you create lots of fun things from small little plaques, jars, um, you know, personalized little suitcases to bigger decor for the wall. My favorite thing to do is to mix the fonts together. So you're going to see a lot of fun um, mixing and matching of the alphabets. Okay, so what are we doing today? So we are going to show you how to, how to use a stencil mask and create a few projects for you and with you and then teach you exactly some tips and tricks, um, things that you should um, do and don't when you use them and you're just going to have lots of fun. Well, now, I'm a little ADD. Is it going to take very long to do these? Well, we're going to show you one that maybe takes 10 to 15 minutes and really anyone can have success doing this. Um, you, you can do one from 10 minutes up to an hour just depending on your skill level and what you're creating. So lots of options. I love that idea. Yeah. Okay, let's get started. Okay, let's do it. All right, so first we're going to gather our supplies. For this project, we're going to do a little 8x10 canvas. This is what this is right here. You can find it at Just, lots yeah, of Yeah, probably about anywhere, yeah. Yeah, a couple things you want to have on hand. First of all, obviously, we need our stencil masks so that I'm all ready to go. My 8x10 canvas. Um, I also need my Mod Podge, which is this guy right here. And I use this probably more than about any product out there. So Mod Podge, we also need a foam brush. Just a simple foam brush. You can buy these by the bundles for just a couple dollars. Um, the next thing I'm going to grab is some of my paint. I have a paint from Martha Stewart, a little gray. Okay, so this is just like acrylic paint, is yeah, that right? Yeah, this is just acrylic craft paint. The next is the next thing I want to have on hand. So, the next thing I'm going to do is get my tissue paper. This is our Pass the Tissue um, Chevron newsprint, which is really popular. Chevrons are great. We all love them. I love the name, Pass so the Tissue, too. It's fun, yeah. It's super fun. Do you just have the one? We only have the one design right now, right? We actually, in the tissue, we have one design. We have um, this floral design that's in our lightweight paper, which we're calling Wrap It Up. I love the name, and I also love the flowers. I think they're super cool. Yeah. Very retro look. And I love this, too, because this is, my, this is my tissue on a roll. I can use as much or as little as I want, and then I can store it when I'm done. Let me just put these off to the side here. It's really super quick and easy. Very. Okay, I'm just simply going to just kind of figure out how much I need. Um, take my scissors and then cut a little bit off right here. And my favorite, favorite thing about this product is that it's in a roll. So now I'm done. I've got what I need. I can just put it back in the tube and, and it looks so pretty. And that's your and storage. Store exactly. Yep. Yeah, I love that. So that's fun. Okay, now I just need to cut this down a little bit more. I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to leave a little bit of a border because I'm going to be wrapping my whole canvas. I'm not cutting it perfectly straight. I'm just kind of eyeballing where I want it because I'm going to wrap it around the canvas. Okay. There we go. Now I'm going to take my Mod Podge and I'm just going to lather it on. Just cover the whole surface. What I do is I just dip my, my brush in there and I'm just going to cover the whole thing just like I'm painting a surface. I want to do that. This is fun. Oh, and I must say, I love the way that Mod Podge smells. <laughs> it reminds me of when I was in second grade and we used to make craft projects. Did you eat glue? I did. <laughs> Everybody did. As you can see, I'm just kind of covering this just like I would if it was paint. Um, with Mod Podge, I like to get a good covering, but less is more. We don't want to get too much. And I always like to smooth it out so that we don't have bubbles later. So next, I'm going to take my tissue paper and I'm just going to lay it right on top. And I'm just going to kind of try to lay my, my chevrons so that they're pretty straight. I can just by eyeballing it. And this doesn't need to be stressful. It doesn't need to be exactly perfect. Um, but I just lay it right on top of there, and then I'm going to use my hands and just kind of smooth it out. Just like this. That's my fingers. And tissue is great for this because it's really forgiving. So it actually just kind of bounces around with the canvas and, and works in, you know, 
works easily. That's a super great point. You can also use um, a couple other things, a brayer, which is a great tool to use. This is this guy right here. And basically, you're just going to use this to kind of smooth it out. It's a little bit more challenging on canvas. If I've got a really solid surface, then I've got a little bit firmer seam. That's a good tool, good tool to have. But um, I love just using my fingers. So what's really kind of cool is, OK, so you're doing this on a canvas, but there's other surfaces you can do it on, too. Absolutely. Like wood and metal and... Anything, really. I have an old stack of sheet music from my grandmother. And I've actually used a couple of those, and we'll show you a project, too. That's super fun. Yeah, just old sheet music covering a surface. Looks awesome. Cool. OK, so now I've got this covered on the front. Um, I do actually love the little bit of wrinkles that are here. It makes it fun. It gives it texture. Um, so I don't worry too much about it being absolutely perfect because, you know what, it gives it more character when, we, when it's not. So then I'm just going to get a little bit more of my Mod Podge here. Oops, I got a little much there. You want to get get your surface covered as quick as you can. Then I'm just going to wrap this up here, and I just kind of treat it like a little present. You can make this really cool project very, very quickly, and it looks like you bought it at the store. Yeah, you know it what does. I mean? It does. Because I was, I was in like like a lot of the retailers this weekend, and I saw Subway art everywhere. Okay, so I'm now I'm just going to add a little bit more to the back so that I can just seal it all the way around. And I'm just going to give it a little tuck right now. I'm going to come back later and add a little bit more to the back just to keep it really solid. And then I've got my surface covered. So see how easy that is? That's Looks awesome. Good. Very, very easy. Okay. So my next step that I want to do is I'm going to actually do another layer of Mod Podge on the top. And the reason I'm doing this is that decoupage glue also works as a sealer. So you're sealing whatever surface you have here. And what this is going to do is it's going to help your letters, once you put them down, or your patterns to come off really cleanly, really crispy, crisply. And um, also, you're not going to pull fibers off of what's underneath. So we're going to seal it. Just kind of lather this on here. And then once I've got my surface covered, we're going to let it dry for a few minutes. It usually takes five to 10 minutes. And then we can do our design. So, okay, so now you put your uh, second layer of Mosh Posh. Yep. Well, actually, it's one layer on top of this. Right, so I've sealed my surface. Okay. So now I'm ready to do my design. Okay, okay. so what are you going to do? So I am going to peel the letters off. This is why these are so great, because you can actually use them over, over and over, yeah, right? I love that. So easy to peel off, just like so. You can see it's very pliable, easy to move around. Now, I'm going to choose a guide on my pattern for this one. Um, if I just had a solid surface, then I might use my ruler and draw a line. But I already can see, I've already got a straight line right here. I'm just going to go ahead and put down the E. And I know it's going to be kind of a tight fit, so I'm putting my letters really close together for this one. But it's going to look great. OK, so but if they draw a line, they're not going to be able to see the line because you're going to paint over the top of That's it. That's right. And if you use a pencil, you can erase it if, if you're worried about it, too. He's going to love this, like I said, because he loves anything with his name on it. I think most kids do. We all love our own name, right? We like to see it in, in light. Absolutely love it. Okay, so you can see I'm a little bit short. So this is great. This is what I want to show you right here, is that now it's a little bit short. I'm just going to move this over, and I'm going to make it fit, because these are repositionable and reusable. I can just move it around until I have my design exactly how I want it to be. Everyone has their own design. Now you can see I've got the name Ethan, and we're ready to go. Now I'm just going to smooth out my letters here, just like so. And then the next thing I'm going to do is grab my paint. And I just squirt a little bit on top. You could put it on a paint tray if you wanted to. Squirt some paint right on the top right here. And I kind of just start with what I think will cover it, and then I can always add more later. OK. OK. I'm just going to simply cover the whole surface. So I'm painting right over my letters right over the paper. I'm just going to cover the surface with paint as much as I want to. So if I wanted to have this whole thing a solid gray, then I'd add some more paint. But okay. I like that I can see the chevron through. And some colors so are I'm probably... So stop there. Oh, sorry. Some colors are probably a little more translucent than others. Yeah, right? they are. Yeah, your lighter colors and the brand of paint. It kind of just depends on your brand of paint, too. What we're going to do next is just take a pin, and I'm going to lift it right underneath my letter so I can pull it up and then grab it with my fingers. And I'm going to put it right back on my sheet that I picked it off from. Gonna take a baby wipe. These are the best things ever. Clean it right off so it's ready to go for the next time. I pick them up with on both sides so that it comes up really smooth. 
Okay, and we also, we uh, take the letters off when, when the paint's wet for a couple of reasons. The first one is that we get these really crisp lines. If the paint starts to dry, it will start drying it together. So you want to get it off when it's kind of wet. The second reason is, obviously, I can clean my stencils a lot easier when the paint is wet. Okay, so really now, easy. Uh, Ethan's name, ready to go for his room. He's going to love it. Yes, and then from here you can do all sorts of fun things like I might just want a little bit more paint on the side. You could actually paint the sides if you wanted to. I always like to leave the, the side open just because I think it's fun. Okay, you use um, like a sanding block too, haven't you? Yeah, so once this gets dry, and that's my other thing that I love to do. I love to stress. I love everything to look kind of vintage, a little bit more kind of old. You know, right, we like, yeah, we like old is new again, right? We like things to look a little, look and feel a little bit older. I use a sanding block just like this one. Um, and I'll just take, you know, I'm already starting to dry. You know, I can just sand some of that paint away and make it look a little bit more distressed. Right, and well, the other thing you can do too is you can add like um, embellishments to it, right? Yeah. All right, so now we've done our distressing. Um, I love how it looks. Ethan's going to love this. He's going to love it in his room. Like I said, anything with his name on it, he digs it. So Everybody loves their name, their own name. They do. And so that is super, super cool. And yeah. that will be in his room and it'll say, This is Ethan's room. And that's like in 10 minutes. That's great. I think that's a great project. Okay, so this next project I am super really excited about. And I bet you are too. I am excited. And you know this why? Fun. Why? Like we've had like a ton of people asking about it. We have. They've seen it, they saw what you did and they wanted to see it. they wanted you to show how to do it. Okay, so we are gonna create a subway art piece from my favorite song that I sing to my kids, which is You Are My Sunshine. We've all heard that song. We love it. We are going to be using our wood plaques. This is our scallop oval. Mm -hmm. We um, have three designs of, of these. We have a heart, we have a scalloped heart, and then we have this one. So we're going to use this surface to start. Um, all, and when it comes pretty raw, you just got to sand the edges just a little bit. So I'm going to do that, get all the little shavings off. We're going to do that. And then we are ready to go. So unlike our last project, we covered it with a tissue paper. That's right. This one, I'm actually just going to paint my surface. So um, this is great. I've already got my color picked out. This is my sea breeze blue right here, my favorite color. I wondered about that. This is the one that I love. Okay, so. I love bright, and I'm glad that they're in. They are. That's fun. Again, I just simply take my paint, and I'm just going to dump it right on my surface. I'll just start with that much, and then I can add more later. I'm just going to go ahead and paint. I love paint. Paint's one of my favorite favorite things. Favorite Painting tools. is fun because you know what? It just it changes everything, doesn't it? It does change everything. And what I love about acrylic paint, craft paint, is that you can make old new again, right? You've got stuff in your house that you haven't. You maybe you've had some a sign in your house that you've used in your house for years. You want to just change it up, add some paint to it, get the stencil masks, put a new thing on it, and it's ready to go. This paint dries really fast too. It does. It does dry fast, and I love it for this project because. I can move along a lot quicker. Okay, so we are we're covered. Our surface is covered. We just got to let this one dry, and then we will be ready to move on to the next step. We're all dry and ready to go. So now I'm going to do my guidelines. I'm going to draw draw some straight lines with a pencil that I so I can line up my letters. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to take a ruler and a pencil, like I mentioned, and I've just used these two scallops right here to start with as my kind of points to create my straight line. Going to do this one right here. So I just do a light pencil line, and the great thing about this is when it's done, you can either erase your pencil line or just paint right over it, and then you won't even see it at all. So I'm doing two and a half inches. So how did you determine where you wanted your lines? You just kind of like, uh, uh, did you lay it out beforehand? or? Yeah, so when I first started, I started playing with the U and where I wanted it to play. So I okay. figured out where I wanted my first letter to go, my first word, and then I just kind of worked down from there. My last line. Okay. Okay. So ruler and a pencil. Easy enough. So next. Okay. So now you're going to peel off the letters and put them on. I am. I'm going to start with my U, which is the first word. And I'm going to start with my middle letter so that I can start getting it centered right away. Okay. Ah, I'm just going to go. Idea. I'm just going to eyeball. So I always look for points on my surfaces that I can use as um, center points. Then I know that my O is going to be center. Mm -hmm. Then I don't have to spend the time because sometimes I get a little lazy and a little ADD and I just want to be, you know, move along. So now I can see that it's straight center from that point. Okay, so then I've got my U. I have a butterfly in the middle. Well, I love the icons. I think that they're, they're really fun. Yep. 
Okay, Aaron, I'm placing it a little bit off center just because R has three letters, my has two. Now I have that song stuck in my head. You know that, don't sing you? Sing it. Sing it for us. No, I'm not going to sing it for you. <laughs> you can use these a million times over, and you, you don't have hardly any money into it. You don't. And you can find any surface that you already have, even. You don't have to buy something new. You can, can I use tell something you? you already have. That's what I think is awesome. Yeah. Okay, sunshine. Okay, what do you think? I love that. I can't believe you did that. Okay, so see, everything's lined up pretty much. You know, you can do a little shifting. Some people are more particular than others. Um, I'm, now I'm good to go. So all I have to do is add my paint. All right, so I'm going to take my gold paint. And just like I've, I'm going to make sure these are all down. It looks, it looks good. It looks good. I'm just going to put some gold on the top here. It's easy. I don't have to dirty a plate or anything else or even a palette tray. But you, there's lots of different ways to get your paint. So you're using, it, you again, you're using metallic, gold, acrylic paint. That's right. Now this gold paint, um, you're, you're going to see it's going to take a couple of layers because metallic paint in general is a little bit more transparent. You know, I, I taught a class and I thought my project was really cool until I, let, until I saw everybody else's project. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a lot better than mine, but they did a great job. But you still loved what you did, right? Oh, I did. I, I, well, I was really proud of mine until I saw theirs. So I'm just going to cover the wood, the wood here. And like I said, I could have done this in the turquoise if I wanted to. Um, it kind of depends on what you're after. It would have been cool in the turquoise because then you kind of see that glow of the turquoise on, from the side. I just recommend playing with different, different ideas. And what's awesome about paint is that an ink or any of those mediums is if you don't like it, you can paint over it, right? Right. I've got this sheet of letters ready to go. So I'm going to peel off every letter that goes with this particular alphabet. Just I'll, I'll start it. wiping them off. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, so we've got our A. Really, really easy to clean up. I can't wait to see what other people create with using their stencil mask. That's what's so fun. Okay, so now we've got everything off of our letters off the board. And I see a little bit of a, where'd my brush go? Here we go. Just a little paint seeping over the edge. So I'm going to get this off. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to add my sparkle Mod Podge next. All right, so this is our sparkle Mod Podge, which we're going to use this to cover this because I want this to glisten and okay. shine and be sparkly. Uh, I like it. Because I'm a girl and I like that stuff. Girls like <laughs> Girls like that. This is great because it's just a real subtle um, iridescent sparkle in here that just kind of gives it that little detail that you won't, it doesn't like, you don't notice right away, but it's really fun. So and we're also sealing, which is great. We're going to seal everything together. This is great too because if I happen to brush by it or my child touches it with their finger, I can wipe it off. Okay. You know, that's what the sealing does to it. As you can see, it's just laying down a little bit of a glitter right here. If I wanted it to be even more sparkly, then I could just take my um, glitter and, you know, just kind of sprinkle over the top to add even more because this is a glue, so it's going to hold it down. We like sparkly things. Um, it makes it feel just kind of, I don't know, royal and fun and just it makes you happy. I don't know. When I see sparkles, I get happy. Do you? <laughs> Absolutely. Then we just let it dry, and from this point, um, We've got a beautiful piece that I can add a button here. I could add some lace or a trim. You could actually take some more paint or ink and ink the edges, add a little trim right here. Just kind of the possibilities are endless. So a lot of fun things to do there. It's a great project. Yeah. And we love it. Oh, cute ribbon. Can't forget the ribbon. Yeah, I love that. Add your ribbon and you're ready to go. I like it. Hey, we had a really great time today and we hope that you did too. Jamie, did you have a good time? I had the best time. It was great. I had a blast. And remember, for, for project ideas and inspiration, or even to post your projects, go to our website, hazelandruby.com. We really want to see what you create. And remember, you're always happier when you can live handmade.